I woke up this morning in a real funk. He likes me. After doing the morning chores, I struggled to get started on anything else. Sometimes it's just overwhelming looking at everything. And hard to pick one thing to get started on. I ended up just standing there and staring. And not even sure what to do at all. Grace's one gosling is doing well, and they're about to introduce it to the big geese. Not, they're not going to let them touch each other, but. They're just going to let it come out and see what it thinks. I wonder what the mommy goose would do if we showed it to her. Should we go see what the mommy goose would do? I don't think we should let her see it. She might jump off her nest and try to take care of it. <laughs> when you're a big goose, you can go out like that and run around in the grass all day and play. And you'll be white, not yellow. <laughs> and brown. One thing we thought about doing with that goose was actually letting the goose that's sitting on the nest adopt it. The problem with that would be she would probably stop sitting on eggs and jump off the nest and just take care of that one uh, gosling and then the rest of the eggs would just rot. This morning another gosling started pipping through its egg and, and breaking a little hole in its egg. I thought all the other eggs were goners and weren't going to hatch, but this one looks like it's doing pretty well. We'll show you. It's got a little breathing hole at least. And it's using it. you got to come all the way out though if you're going to make it, buddy. Are they talking to each other? Mm -hmm. geese, He's like, geese. come on, it's nice out here. It's better than there. <laughs> yeah. geese, geese. The kids made a little wading pool for him. He, we're not letting him swim yet because we don't want him to get wet and cold, but he's playing in the hose, basically. Sometimes starting is the best way to get out of a funk. So I took action and chose to do something that I knew needed doing and I also knew it's something that I would really enjoy. The gosling is really a big help on the farm. Yeah. And the gosling is actually helping. It's eating. It's not helping, it's eating. It's eating the weeds. There he goes. He's getting weeds now. So I went to the garden and started weeding. And after about an hour, I felt completely recharged. The sun shining down on this incredibly beautiful and crisp spring day. I think this is what they call hand cultivation. The garden is a place that when you take care of it, it takes care of you. And that's in more ways than just producing food for the table. When you weed it and water it, it also can take care of your heart. And today, it did for me. Oh, so far I am liking these cardboard and straw paths. When you dig down, it's nice and wet under there. You can find worms that are on top of the cardboard, and then when you lift up the cardboard, look at that. Even more worms, they're just everywhere. So worms like it, you gotta be on the right track. Now we're turning our attention to this blueberry bed. I know, some of y'all knew this was gonna happen. I put down grass clippings to mulch it, and a lot of weeds have grown up through. 
it's really hard to kill sod and grass and weeds with anything by putting it on top. So we're gonna go through and get rid of all these weeds in here. We'll come back remulch heavier and then we're gonna work on that end down there and just knock the weeds down so when we mulch it, they won't as easily poke up through. It's a war on weeds and we have our weapons. We're ready to fight. Yeah! <laughs> Justice, look, if you're gonna do it on this end, pull the grass clippings back, dig out the weed, and then cover it back up, okay? Like this. Cover it back up. Yeah, 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 yeah. You have a sword. He has a pickaxe. Mason or hammer? He, actually, he has um, a battle axe. A battle axe? Whoa. What do you have? Sword. And I have a very cheap shovel. You're my weed pulling club. I am? Yeah, you're in the club, aren't you? Oh, yeah. But cover it all up with grass clippings in your nose. Look, big man. Look, big man. You gotta smooth it out when you're done like this. In times of war, there are always casualties. Like this young blueberry plant, which was probably laid upon by a dog. And this valiant warrior whose finger was skinned alive, will he return to the battle or fall forever? Some valiant warriors fight on. We few, we happy few, we band of weed killers. Is he returning to the battlefield? Can he still fight with his injured finger? Hey. One brother returns to another brother, his weapon, and together they plunge back into battle. Look what I did. Wow. That's safe. And the brother has thrown his sword. And the brother has thrown his sword. Into the ground. Into the ground. Gardening with geese, gardening with chickens. This chicken's kind of getting in the way <laughs> because she's so friendly. She's not afraid of me at all. She should be afraid when I'm wielding my war hammer, but um, she's not. She's just coming to eat worms and take advantage of my hard work so she doesn't have to do the hard work of digging everything up. Here's a worm. Did I eat it? Uh huh. I think this is going to be an ongoing process. Hopefully, we'll get further and further ahead. At least, though, we gave the weeds a beat down. They will remember in order to protect these beautiful little, very young blueberry plants like this one here. And it's covered with little blossoms. Probably they'll fruit this year. And next year, we'll probably get a really nice crop. Breeze chamomile is doing so well this year. And that's what you see that's still scattered through this area. It's even growing out into the grass and you can see it here and it comes all the way out. It's growing down here. I'm just trying to take care of the plants that take care of us. Little boy, go little boy. Oh, come on. Go little boy, go little boy. Go. You can do it again? Yeah. Okay, do it again. What is he doing? So You're so strong. I'm digging in the homestead freezer, pulling out some steak for a special supper tonight. It's really nice to be able to just walk out here and grab what we need for a great meal. Yeah. Sirloin steaks on the grill. It's a really special thing to have a full freezer. This is actually not our cow, but it was the cow of of friends of ours that we bought whole and I don't know in the end maybe we didn't need to but between this cow and the steer we just sent off we would probably have beef for the year between all of it how much did beef steak hang at so beef steak the our steer we sent off he hung at 361 pounds and that 
means carcass after being skinned and eviscerated 361 pounds that's actually good I'm really happy with that and that'll be a huge amount of meat to fill our freezers we're going to the garden while the steaks are cooking to pick a really special treat from the early garden as you can see most of the garden is sleeping under silage tarps preparing for this coming season a few things are coming up like these potatoes here I love it when the potatoes come up because that new potato taste is unforgettable and I know they're gonna be growing right down there there's onions and there's strawberries but there's something out here other than asparagus that we can eat right now and it's one of my favorite things guys it's right here it's our pea greens these are breeze peas and she's had a great success with this them this year some years she's had birds come in and eat her peas but this year she covered them with uh, a plastic mesh and she planted them really heavily so we have an abundance of pea greens in a few weeks these will be climbing the fence and we'll be picking beautiful little sweet peas here but for right now because there's so many we're gonna thin them just a little bit and we're gonna eat the greens they're so good they are so good my dear they're sweet too they're sweet they're just as good as peas in my book they make a great addition to salads or you can eat them plain as a garnish on your plate it's these fruits of the garden that I think I love the most and it's not the slammed abundance of mid and late summer tomatoes summer squash corn it's this time it's a quiet time it's springtime when the days are incredibly beautiful and you can go out and you can have a snack that lifts your spirits and it's the first green from your land of the year and it's amazing so here's to asparagus and early pea greens we love you I'm are you guys gonna fill up that whole bowl for a little garnish for supper mm -hmm. so I'm gonna eat some of them myself what are you gonna do with it eat it you like it mm -hmm. you I'm eat gonna it Spilgus for my own food. It's just a beautiful abundance of pea greens, and we only picked a few. I should have brought a larger bowl, but I didn't think of it. This is just a garnish for our meal, kind of a mini salad to go along our green beans and steak and potatoes. You brought me some asparagus? Yeah. Yummy steaks. And last to it. Who's last. enjoying their pea greens? Me. They're fresh food from, straight from the garden. Potatoes and steak from our friend's cow. Green beans from our farm. From last year? Mm -hmm. Delicious. Yep. They should last us till the green beans come in. Basically, every single farm. Folks, it's been another great day on the homestead. We are enjoying this incredible, cool spring day and the small harvest from our extremely early garden. Please join us in our next video and we will see you soon. Goodbye. Bye.